response video to Pyro, I guess. Didn't understand a bit of this last video. <laughs> Just completely, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, but anyway, so let's try this from a new angle. Um, I'm sort of making the argument. Well, first, I mean, if in absolute terms, let's just go right back to the very beginning and just say if there's nothing and you create something, the something you're going to have to create is going to be something like desire or need or want or whatever that is. And isn't that just kind of stupid? I mean, to start that, I mean, you don't need to create it. There's no need existing that says you need to do it. So why would an intelligence do it? The only thing that would do it would be something perverted, something not intelligent, something perverted by desire. I mean, even God, as described, would have to be somehow have some sort of horniness for the human race to exist. Like, oh, I need, I need little people to entertain me. I need them to dance and scream and, <laughs> you know, and, and what, you know, play out their silly little lives. Um, you know, he's like, it's, it's still, it's more feeding some, it has to feed some kind of need. So that's part of the zero sum, is you're already starting off with a universe where you can't make something without making something in need. You have to create need. And that's just kind of stupid. You can't rationally make any sense out of that. So that's sort of where the zero sum starts right from the beginning, you can find it. And then when I'm talking about it, it's not like you balance the two things together and you come up with a zero. The zero sum just kind of means that no matter what you do, no matter how you manipulate the system, the best you can do is, is like a Pac-Man, the best you can do is eat up all the little negatives. You, 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 can't, you can't win the game because there is no real positive, there's just eating negative. And that's sort of the point I've been making is that all real value is kind of just undoing a negative circumstance, a, a circumstance of deprivation or lacking, you know, some sort of need to be fulfilled, some sort of satisfaction, some sort of emptiness that needs fulfilling, um, some hole that needs filling. I've used that analogy. But all these analogies get ignored. Uh, so anyway, let's, I just figured we'd try this a new way. Real simple way, maybe. Maybe too simple, maybe too ludicrous, but anyway. All right, so you got a void, you got an empty space, and you got little planets floating around in it. So let's just keep it simple. Just keep it little planets. Now we give planets some sort of desire mechanism, right? So we give them a, well, you know, an erection or something. We give them something that tells them they want something now. They want to go somewhere. All right, um, but the point is they can't get there. They can't just, they just can't act on that thing, that desire. Um, they, they had, they need instruments, they need a Lamborghini, you know, they need something to get them to the, you know, the vagina planet. Um, so they need moons, or they need some little, they need other people to do work for them, they need other things to do things, and to sacrifice, and to risk, and to do all these things to make their life possible. I mean, you can't live without, you know, there being the risk that you would have been born with your brain outside of your skull, uh, you know, horribly disabled. Um, that's the risk that has to be taken for you to exist. And uh, then there's the risk of the whole, at any moment in your life, catastrophe can fall on you. Some vessel in your brain can explode and you could be left, um, you know, incapable of articulating a sound or uttering a, a movement and yet still be trapped inside of your body, screaming, saying, kill me, kill me, and no one being able to hear you or some other scenario. And these are all part of the risk that's paid for this stupid game we're playing. So it's not cheap. That's obvious. <laughs> you know, at best it's not cheap. And so we have to come up with some explanation for why you would take that risk. Why would you roll those dice? So why would you do it? Why would you impose on that first planet, that little empty void, that first desire? What's what's the rationale for it? How, how can you... Because... Um, what were, and what are the odds? I mean, what are the odds that you can create some perfect, like maybe there's some way it can happen. Like say if there's there's three planets with erections and they all work together and use each other's gravity and then they can all get to the vagina and all get satisfied and be happy. But they all have to work perfectly together to do it. And if one of them doesn't play by the rules, by the game, then none of them get anything. And so they all just sit there with their, their, uns, their, <laughs> their, their unsatisfied desire. Um, 
and it's fail. And let's say there's a, only a one in one million chance that they'll be able to work together to get there. So what the, what's the point in it? What, how do you justify the risk of failure? And when you look at the human race, or you look at the animal kingdom, or you look at the nature of life itself, all this consumption and reproduction, what's the odds of it coming to some sort of um, perfect, you know, zero-sum perfection, where, where it's optimized so much that there's very little red numbers floating around, and it's all just joy and happiness and, you know, perfect adventuring fun. Um, you know, what's the odds of that utopia being achievable? Um, or anything even close to it? And, and what's the real odds of dismal, horrific failure? Um, so that's where the, the real game is. Is, is, is. Let's just be honest about this. This is a, this is a sack of shit. And you people keep justifying it. And, and the point really isn't so much that, okay, you've made personal choices in your life to invest in this shit. And, and to talk it up like it's making some sort of sense and like we're going somewhere, like humanity makes sense. But you're talking it up to another generation that's going to step into the same fucking traps, the same traps of bullshit, absolute fucking cliche. Um, you know, you talk about the Borg or, or, or mind control or Big Brother. I mean, that's when the that, that's a bigger brother than religion itself is the is the religion of positive thinking and. You know, this idiotic notion that we're somehow accomplishing something. Now we're a bunch of selfish little organisms chasing in our little fucking wheel some kind of thing called satisfaction that in the end we're never going to fucking achieve. And even when we're, a, you know, even when we're a crotchety old piece of crap, we're still going to be running the fucking wheel, thinking, oh well, I gotta go live one more day so I can eat one more, you know, apple cream pie crumpet or something. I mean, it's just fucking ludicrous and stupid. You're a bunch of fucking addicts. Just admit what you are. Admit what the game is. And give the next generation some hope of being rational and realizing there's nothing to do here but clean up this mess. Sanitize this slop. Um, you know, that intelligence shouldn't be plagued, blighted uh, with the dismal prospect of living out its existence attached to a bunch of fucking microbes, and that's what we are. So it is bacteria with brains, stupid, ugly, dumb bugs, um, you know, chasing and chasing and chasing a nothing, a big ball of nothing. Uh, yeah, redundancy at best. Um, and, and it's silly, it's just plain silly. It is addiction. Let's use the right word again. It's addiction, you're addicts, that's it. Without the addiction, none of this can make any sense whatsoever. Uh, it has no rational premise. Creating need without need? <laughs> you know, creating a problem? Why would you do that? Why would you create a problem so you can clean it up, so you can fix it? I mean, that's just stupid. Um, especially when you're not going to be able to clean it up, and you're not going to fix it especially when it's going to get out of control so fast. Like I said, go ahead, give me your scenario of how you would create a perfect... Give me your description of utopia. Let's see if it has something to do with some kind of something that human beings have some realistic prospect of achieving. Um, yeah, just such crap. <laughs> it really is just so silly that you're going to somehow create some sort of rich environment for human beings in some sort of perfectly cost-effective manner where we're only going to use 74.8 cents of uh, energy per day and we're going to consume as individuals 75.9 percent of value or some other kind of equation. It just ain't going to fucking happen. Um, I mean, even the Matrix was bullshit. Human beings wouldn't even make good batteries. Their fail is a battery. <laughs> Let alone... Well, I won't get into that. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's probably enough of the video. Uh, so anyway, um, the Dusty Foot guy under the name Ad Johnson something or whatever uh, made a very good video saying basically this sh same kind of shit and uh, saying it a different way, and it was a pretty good way. So I'll point the link to that. I'll post this as a response to that. I probably because the pyro video was kind of I don't know where the hell he was going with that. I just maybe I wasn't listening carefully enough, but I just, just didn't. Just more of this, let's make up a new language to talk about life, and let's not use any words anybody ever will recognize, and let's not talk about anything kind of real, like a real desire or some kind of real feeling. Let's just talk about a bunch of ambiguous mush that doesn't have anything to do with reality.